Building a marketing team used to cost over $10,000 a month, five specialists, endless meetings, weeks to launch a single campaign. But here's the thing. I'm not gonna tell you to hire more people or spend more money on agencies because that's not what you need. What you need is to understand that one person with the right AI tools can outperform an entire marketing department. And I'm gonna prove it to you. Because the most powerful marketing system I've ever built wasn't created by a team of experts. It was built by me and Claude Code in a single afternoon. Today, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I use Claude Code to build what I call a 10K AI marketing team. You'll see the actual workflow, the problems I use, and how the system is already generating results that would make traditional marketing teams jealous. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to build your own AI marketing operation that works 24-7 while you sleep. I added the AI tools that we're gonna use in the description so you can check it out. Before we jump into building the workflow step by step, I want to give you a quick look at how it actually works in practice. For this demo, you can see here that I will send a message in the Telegram asking to create an event with a date, time, and title. On the screen, you can see the AI reply right away with a confirmation. It repeats the details back to me, makes sure everything looks correct, and even offers to double-check my calendar before logging it in. This is powerful because it shows how something as casual as a chat message can instantly become a structured calendar entry. The workflow knows how to tell the difference between a text and a voice message. It can check whether there are any conflicts, and it won't save anything until the details are confirmed. That means less back and forth, fewer mistakes, and a much smoother scheduling experience. To walk you through how it happens, I'll start by executing the workflow and sending that request to my Telegram bot. The if node immediately decides it's a text message, so it follows the false branch. You can see the exact message appear in the Telegram trigger, which shows what the bot received. After that, I'm going to pull up the AI agent setup that I built in Claude Code. This is the part of the flow that interprets my request, checks the availability on my calendar, and prepares the event details. Then, the AI wraps it up by sending a response back in Telegram, either confirming the event, like in this case, or letting me know there's a conflict I should resolve first. Alright, seeing it in action makes it clear how smooth the process can be. But none of it works without the right setup behind the scenes. So to build the workflow successfully, we first need to prepare the environment. Having the right apps installed ensures that every step runs smoothly and prevents errors later on. Each tool has a role to play. Claude code for generating and managing the automation logic, Node.js to power it, and IDE like Cursor to edit and maintain code. N8N is the platform where everything runs, and the N8N MCP GitHub repository to tie it all together. Getting these in place first gives us a solid foundation to work from. We will start with Claude Code, which is the AI coding assistant we'll rely on throughout this process. I will head over to the Claude Code site and show you how it works in the setup. Right after that, we'll take a look at the official documentation, which not only guides us through the installation but also highlights the requirements needed. This is where we'll note that Claude Code depends on Node.js as its runtime environment. To cover that dependency, I will open the Node.js site and download the version needed to run Claude Code smoothly. With that installed, the next piece is an IDE. For this tutorial, we'll use Cursor, which makes editing and managing code easy, though technically any code editor will work if you already have a preference. After the IDE, we're going to move to N8N, the automation platform where we'll import and run the workflows generated by Claude Code inside Cursor. This is where everything comes together and executes. Finally, we will connect everything through the N8N MCP GitHub repository, which acts as an assistant to Claude Code. It provides the extra support needed to streamline workflow production and ensures that everything integrates properly. After these steps, our entire environment setup is ready. Claude Code, Node.js, Cursor, N8N, and the N8N MCP repo, all working together so the workflow can run without issues. The environment is locked in and ready to go. However, setup alone doesn't create results. 
Our next step is to shape the idea for the workflow we're gonna build. To do this, we prepared two prompts that look very similar at first glance. The key difference is that the second one includes an extra instruction, which is use edit and MCP, while the first one leaves that out. Comparing these side by side gives us a clear view of how workflows behave with and without MCP involved. This is how it works. I'll open cursor or whichever IDE you prefer and start with prompt 1 MD. After that, I will switch over to prompt 2 MD while you'll notice the additional step that calls for MCP. That single change is what enables the agent to pull free time slots directly from a calendar and build scheduling automation into the workflow itself. This shows the added value of MCP in real time. Looking at both prompts, we'll see how MCP improves accuracy, reduces errors, and makes the automation process more efficient. It's a simple way to highlight the practical difference between a standard AI prompt and one designed to leverage MCP for stronger results. Seeing how MCP changes the outcome makes it clear why the right setup matters. To put these prompts into action, the next step is getting Claude code up and running inside the IDE so we can start building directly. Getting Claude code running inside the IDE is the step that unlocks everything. In our case, we're using cursor, but the process applies just as easily in other editors too. The setup itself is straightforward. Start by heading to the Claude code documentation site and copying the standard installation command. Back in cursor, let's open the terminal, paste the command, and run it. We'll also need to type Claude to confirm the installation. From there, I'll close the terminal, pull up the Claude code icon from the top right of the IDE, and place it beside your prompt so it stays visible and ready whenever you need it. Integrating Claude code into the IDE means we can create, refine, and connect workflows directly where you write prompts. Using cursor alongside Claude code keeps everything in one place, so adjusting and testing automation happens instantly without jumping between tools. The result is faster, smoother, and more efficient development. Now, the real test begins when we finally hand Claude one of our prepared prompts and see what it can actually build. Up until now, everything has just been set up, but this is where the written instructions turn into a working edit and workflow. Running this first build also sets up the comparison we'll make later between results with and without MCP. And turning a plain text prompt into a functioning workflow in one pass is the heart of this whole process. At the same time, seeing the gaps when MCP isn't involved makes the difference obvious. It's the best way to show how MCP improves accuracy and completeness. I'll start by typing. Read Prop1MD and build a complete edit and workflow on the build idea. After waiting for Claude code to finish, I'll look for the one line that says, I've created a complete edit and workflow. That's the signal the output is ready. From there, I'll head over to edit.io, create a workflow, and click the three dots beside the save icon. Importing the workflow and hitting open brings it in, but right away we can notice here that something is off. The workflow is filled with question marks, showing that while it was generated, it isn't complete or ready to run setting the stage for why MCP is so important in the next step. The first run showed us what happens without MCP, so the next step is to bring edit and MCP into the picture and run the second prompt with it enabled. Here, I want things to really level up, because MCP acts like a direct bridge between Claude code and N8N, filling in the blanks that were missing before and producing a cleaner, more reliable workflow. Inside Cursor, I'll start by creating a new file and naming it mcp.json, then pasting in the prepared setup code for Windows. With that in place, I'll open the terminal and grab the installation command directly from the N8N MCP GitHub page. Let's run that command and get MCP installed, and once it's complete, I'll close the terminal to keep things tidy. Next, I'll click the Claude icon at the top right of the IDE and move it alongside the prompt so it stays visible and ready. Typing slash MCP is a quick way to confirm that MCP is running properly inside the editor. After pressing escape to get back into command mode, I can finally test the second build. This time, I'll type. 
Build add prompt to MD and use NNN MCP. Build a complete N8N workflow. From there, Claude starts creating the workflow again, but with MCP active, the process is a lot different. It may take a little longer since MCP is checking details and filling in missing pieces as it builds, but the extra time will definitely pay off. Instead of the incomplete result we saw earlier, the workflow now comes through much more polished, with errors resolved along the way. The next step is to bring the MCP-powered workflow into N8N so we can see how it compares. After Claude confirms that the workflow has been created, I'll open the generated JSON file and take a quick look at the structure. From there, I'll head over to the N8N dashboard, create a new workflow, click the three dots beside the save icon, and select import. Choosing the JSON file and hitting open loads everything directly into N8N. Once the workflow appears, we can see that this build is much more complete. The nodes are already in place, the logic is intact, and aside from connecting credentials or making small adjustments, nothing major needs fixing. Unlike the first build, there are no question marks or placeholders scattered across the nodes. This shows exactly how MCP enhances Claude Code's output, turning it into a workflow that's clean, structured, and almost ready to run right away. At this point, the workflow is already in place, but it's not quite ready to run as is. A few adjustments are still needed so the automation can function reliably from start to finish. To do this, I'll start by tidying up the workflow for readability, then connect the Telegram credentials in both the trigger and download voice nodes. Next, I'll connect OpenAI credentials in the transcribed voice note and make sure the latest available GPT model, such as GPT-5 Nano, is selected. After that, I'll reconnect Telegram credentials in the send response node so replies work smoothly. Inside the AI agent tool, the generated create event node can't be used directly, so I'll replace it with new Google Calendar tools. First, I'll add a create event tool, set its resource to event, operation to create, choose the right calendar, and copy the start and end times from the generated node. Then, I'll add a get availability tool, set its resource to calendar, operation to availability, select the calendar, and again, copy the start and end times. We will also remove the incomplete Google Calendar nodes that Claude created. Lastly, I'll review everything once more, making sure every connection is in place. At this stage, the workflow is no longer just a generated draft. It's a complete, usable NITN workflow automation built with Claude code and cursor, now fine-tuned and ready to execute. And that's the full walkthrough. See you in the next one.